Tom, my boy, you've had a lot of success tracking down criminals. How about tracking down a winner for me? I wish I could help you. But you see, criminals are the more predictable of the two. Now, now, Tom, come on, give me just one peek. You wouldn't be interested in this. Oh, you're wrong. Horses are my first love. Come on, what have you got there? A lady's profile. Lady's profile? Lady's profile? Have you got the right track? Oh, yes, yes. Now, let's see. I have Serene Gale to win, Pleasant Surprise to win, and uh, Proud Nancy. I think I'll figure to win, too. And Lady Beautiful. Oh, just look at those lovely little animals. Aren't they delicious? And the jockeys. I just adore that one on Nova Miss. <laughs> oh, be your age, my dear. You just can't bet every horse in every race. Well, why? One of those bound to win. But, Gloria, you're betting more than you're likely to win. Oh, dear, all right. Then I'll forget about Lady Beautiful. No, you mustn't forget Lady Beautiful. Oh, have you some information on this race? Well, I, for one, wouldn't overlook Lady Beautiful. Oh, I can see that you know something. <laughs> oh, we'll cut out proud Nancy instead. The horses are nearing the gate. Oh, don't, dear. Run down and make these bets for me. That's a good girl. Uh, $10 each on numbers 2, 3, 5, and 7 to win, and uh, $4 number 8 to show, and uh, you have the money, haven't you? Yes, Mrs. Peabody. Just who do you think you're fooling? Joan Meredith, bumping into you. What a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence in New York or Saratoga, nor in Havana. Oh, well, maybe I like to follow the ponies. And maybe you don't. Anyway, I'm mighty sick of your following me around. And if you don't stop, I'm going Tell to... Tell the law? I don't think you would. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. Out of 35,000 people here today, you're the only one that's annoyed by my presence. <laughs> that's where you're wrong, Metcalf. Huh? You annoy me, too. As a matter of fact, you always have. And there they go! It's Baby Boy in front by a link. Pleasant surprise is second ahead in front of Proud Nancy. Quadruplets is fourth, and Choo Choo Rogers is coming up fast. Now look here, Tom. No, 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 no. The race. I'm sorry if I butted in. That's your long suit, ain't it, button in? I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Miss Meredith. My name is Tom Lawrence. Uh, some people feel that Metcalf here isn't the best company in the world. Can I be of any assistance? No, thank you. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. So now you got the falcon trailing, huh? What? Who did you say? Tom Lawrence, the falcon. And here comes Lady Beautiful. It's Lady Beautiful and Baby Boy. Here they come to the line of finish. It's Baby Boy and Lady Beautiful. It's Baby Boy and Beautiful. Lady Beautiful wins by a head. Me? Yes, you wonderful man, you. You know Lady Beautiful. I won so much money on her. How did you ever know Lady Beautiful would win? She looked like a winner to me. Remarkable. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I'm Gloria Peabody. How do you do? I'm Tom Lawrence. <laughs> and this is Harvey Beaumont and Alex Hello. Olmstead. How do you do? Glad to know you. Say, if you excuse me, I'd like to place a bet. Oh, wait, I'll go with you. All right. Uh, won't you join me? Thank you. Oh, don't, dear. This is Mr. Lawrence. He's the man that gave me Lady Beautiful, remember? Uh, Mr. Lawrence, Miss Meredith, my secretary. It's a pleasure, Miss Meredith. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence, and I'm happy to know you. Oh, Mr. Lawrence, how can I ever repay you for giving me a winner? Oh, I know. Why didn't I think of it before? You must come to my birthday party tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm flying to Miami tonight. Miami? Oh, you big businessman. You could postpone it just this once. <laughs> no, no. I'm afraid I've already made my reservations. We're going to have such a good time, and uh, it's not every day a girl celebrates her 37th birthday. Oh, may I be the first to congratulate you? And may I add that you don't look your age? Oh, aren't you a dear? Oh, Mr. Lawrence, you dropped this. Oh, thank you. You know, Mrs. Peabody, You've been so nice that I'm tempted to accept your offer. Oh, how charming. <laughs> All right, then, tonight at 8, the Barbary Bowl. Hey, boss, we nearly didn't make it. But you know me, Goldie's strictly with the angles. I run into Lefty Lewis. You know Lefty... No, you wouldn't know Lefty Lewis. He says he's on the legit. Anyway, we pop off tonight at 8.14. I'm sorry, Goldie, but I'm afraid we'll have to cancel them. Okay, I'll call them. Cancel them? What do you mean, cancel them, after we've been waiting on... You give me one iota why we should... Could, could... Mm, never mind. I get it. How do you fall in love? You meet a 
boy, and then you say, hey, and then he, uh, you just fall, it just happens to happen, that's all. How do you meet a boy? You walk outside, and, and you, uh, and then he, uh, you just fall, it just happens to happen, that's all. Throw in some stars and moonlight, they might enhance the scene. There's really not an answer, I can't say what I mean. How do you fall in love? You steal a kiss and then you run. And then he, you just fall, it just happens to happen, that's all. Bonnie mustn't suspect that you came because I asked you to. Now, this sounds serious. And I thought you invited me here because of my uh, irresistible charm. Joan and Mr. Lawrence seem to be enjoying themselves. Yes, I'd say they're doing very well for strangers. Oh, it don't take the falcon very long to get acquainted with a good-looking, a gorgeous, uh, pretty girl. <laughs> Did you say the falcon? The old maestro himself in the flesh. And last year, shortly after I started working for Mrs. Peabody, a valuable bracelet disappeared. And she collected the insurance money from Metcalfe's company, of course. Yes. And he's been trailing me ever since. Sometimes I think I'll... Oh, that's just Metcalfe's way of doing his job. Oh, but that isn't all. A few days ago, I took a strand of her pearls to the jewelers to have them copied. Without consulting her? Yes. Oh, I know it was stupid of me, but I was helpless and I had to protect myself. Uh -huh. Just how much are these pearls worth? They're insured for a hundred thousand dollars. But when I took them to the... I think I know the rest. The jeweler had a look at them and told you they were fakes. Yes. And now to protect yourself, you've got to find the real ones. Mr. Lawrence, you must help me. Miss Meredith, anyone in his right mind would say that you took them yourself. But who said I was in my right mind? Come on, let's join the others. And now, uh, Louie, don't forget the chopped egg and the chopped onions with the caviar, Maureen, just like a... How'd you like that last number? <laughs> Very nice, Alex. You're going to join us, aren't you? Well, I'll join you later. I want to speak to Lola. Oh, bring her along. Lola was the very pretty girl who sang. you excuse me. I'll see you all later. Oh, there you two are. Joan, look who just arrived. The Baron and Baroness Vladika, Mr. Lawrence. How do you do? Nina, yeah, this gentleman is the Falcon. You're very young to be so famous. You're very kind. Mrs. Peabody, thank you for a delightful evening. And now, if you'll excuse me, I... Oh, no, you can't go yet. This is my birthday, and the party isn't over. I'm having Louis serve a little snack in my rooms. But first, we're all going to visit Nick the Night Owl. Night Owl? Who wants to go to a zoo at this hour of the night? It's a radio station upstairs on the roof. You know, Nick plays records for people who call in. <laughs> oh, it's loads of fun. <laughs> Oh, uh, Louis, where were we? Oh, where were we? Oh, yes. A caviar with chopped egg and chopped onions. Oh, Louis, that's fine. I don't fail me. Ça sera parfait, madame. Oh, that's French. <laughs> For you late tuner inners, this is your nocturnal playmate, Nick the Night Owl, broadcasting from his cozy little nest on top the Barbary Towers, <coughs> station KGR. And now, for Terry and Ruth, we give you Gene Krupa. That old Tom Tom and Timpani man playing I Wake Up in the Morning. <laughs> Who's in here? calling a lot of rehearsals lately. Oh, honey. Please don't start that all over again. He's my boss. I've got... But I'm your husband. Please be patient, darling. We won't have to keep our marriage a secret much longer. Not after you become a star, is that it? 
Well, I don't want you to be a star. Not if it means I'm going to lose you. Lose me. I haven't a chance. So, this is what goes on at all night radio stations. Oh, Nicky, you rascal. Maybe we'd better go back and knock before coming in. <laughs> Gloria and John, wow, this is a pleasant surprise. Well, the emphasis on the surprise. Oh, Nick, this is Tom, Tom Lawrence, his friend Goldilocks. How's it's Tom and Mr. Lawrence Goldie. Yeah. Well, what are you celebrating tonight? It's my birthday, Nicky, darling. What? Well, hold everything. This is an occasion. Hello, boys and girls. This is old Nick again, and we interrupt this program to bring you a special flash. Flash, it's birthday time up in the owl's nest. Gloria Peabody, one of my very favorite people, is celebrating her 21st birthday tonight. Oh, Nick, I'm 37. 37. Believe me, folks, she looks 19. <laughs> and that, friends, is the girlish laughter of Gloria Peabody. Say hello to your public, my sweet. Oh, what shall I? That's fine. And now, what would you like to have me play for you? Tell your public, Gloria. Well, I... And uh, for Gloria, who grows younger each birthday, what could be more appropriate than the King Cole Trio singing their own arrangement of Heavenly? Isn't it? Well, Mr. Lawrence, how do you like our setup? Very interesting. If you ask me, I think it's crazy. <laughs> well, you gotta be a little crazy to handle a job like this. <laughs> We're all gonna celebrate in my apartment. Too bad you can't join us. What's happened to the Baron and Baroness and Harvey? They were supposed to meet us here. Oh, Joan, dear, run down and see if they stopped off at our apartments. And uh, check with Louie. He should be ready for us. <laughs> I'll go with you. Uh, Goldie, you better keep Mrs. Peabody company. Oh, gee, thanks, boss. Mighty white of you. Well, anybody want a rumba? Looks like there's never a dull moment for Mrs. Peabody. This is tame. You should see us when things are really booming. <laughs> My sympathy. But seriously, if you want me to help you, I'll uh, have to know one or two things. About Mrs. Peabody? Well, that would help, too. But I'd like to know more about Mr. Beaumont. And the mysterious Baron and Baroness. Surely you don't suspect Mr. Beaumont. He's a very old friend. How about the Baron and Baroness? Oh, Mrs. Peabody met them in uh, Europe, I think. They seem to be all right. <laughs> it's open. Louis must be ready. Looks like it. Everything seems to be here. You better call Mrs. Peabody. Right. Telling her they were worthless. Uh, give me the police department, please. You say this man was dead when you come into the room and. Yes! Hold us for a picture, will you, please? It's frightful, Inspector. Five robberies in six months in this hotel. And now this! Did Mrs. Peabody look to see if anything else is missing beside her pearls? I didn't think to ask her. It doesn't matter. I'll check the files and the other robberies. They're probably all committed by the same person. You mean an employee of this hotel? Possibly. I want a complete list of those both on duty and off. Certainly. This went right through his heart. Death was instantaneous. You use this to pry open the dresser. An amateur, probably. What makes you think so? A professional would have had his own tools. You may all go now, but you're not to move from this hotel without first notifying the police department. And in no event is anyone to leave the city. Poor Louis, what a catastrophe! Oh, you poor darling, the shock you must have had. And now, Miss Meredith, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Uh, Inspector, I was with Miss Meredith when she found the body. In fact, I've been with her all evening. Look, Mr. Lawrence, we want to give you every consideration possible. But I shall have to demand cooperation and no interference. He's just a nosy amateur, if you ask me. Yeah, well, nobody asked you, Junior. I, uh, forgot to mention, Inspector, that Mrs. Peabody has retained me to help recover her pearls. What? I did. I didn't have a chance to mention it, Mrs. Peabody, but I did hire Mr. Lawrence. I, I thought Okay, he might... Lawrence. The fact some jewels are missing is secondary. The important thing here is a murder's been committed. Naturally. However, I think we all agree that both crimes were committed by the same man. Since when did anybody agree the job was done by a man? I'll handle this investigation, Metcalf. And now I'd like to talk to you, Miss Meredith. Alone. This is great. 
Stuck here like a rat in a trap and me with a date in Miami with a gorgeous tomato. Tomato? Tomato, tomato. She's a dame, ain't she? The trouble with you, Gold, is you've no sense of adventure. <laughs> a beautiful girl in trouble, missing pearls, murder. Oh, oh not so hard. Sorry, boss. Goldie, you know... Uh, I know just what you're gonna say. There's more to this case than meets the eye. Well, I wouldn't have put it exactly that way, but you're right. There's enough trouble in this cockeyed world without looking for it. If you as much as leave a window open, it's liable to climb right in your lap. I've got quite a few hunches already. Well, give up. We're both on the same team, ain't we? Well, for one, uh, there are two factors completely unrelated. Oh, come now, boss. Break that down into English. <laughs> Boss! Boss, where are you? Over here. That gun must have been fired from one of them helicopters. Throw another one of them slugs at us? I pull down the shades. Boss, them shades ain't bulletproof. We ought to change rooms. Maybe even cities. And now for Bill White, who's entertaining his old friends, Tommy Milton and Ralph, we're going to play Jimmy Dorsey's recording of Beat Me Daddy, Six to the Bar. Of course, it should be Eight to the Bar. But you know how it is. Jimmy's agent probably got the other two bars. This is like lighting up a target, and I feel like a bullseye. We ever find that shot wasn't trying to hit the bullseye. I suppose he was just celebrating the 4th of July a month late. Anyone would have a job missing us at 15 feet. Somebody's just trying to frighten us. Well, he did a good job on me. Who do you suppose it was? I don't know. But I have an idea it was someone who's quite familiar with the layout of the hotel. Otherwise, he wouldn't have disappeared so quickly. Well, if you mean somebody who lives or works here, <laughs> you're covering a mess of population. This is as good as a fingerprint. It could only fit one gun. Even so, I'm for getting out of here. Want to leave after receiving an invitation like this? Boss, if this is an invitation, it's an invitation to a funeral. Yeah. Let's stay and see whose funeral. That's a cute little trinket. I'd like to have it for a paperweight. Oh, that. Um, hold it for me, will you? Hmm. This is heavy enough to sink a battleship. I'd say, uh, 12 carats? Uh, 11. And all pure, unadulterated glass. I don't say. Stage jewelry, strictly flash. So this is the way the great detective works. Oh, good morning. I, uh... I can assure you my interest was entirely professional. I'd hoped you'd find time to help me. But I am. A good criminologist never overlooks anything. So I see. Oh, now, that's very unfair. And I'll prove it. As a singer, Miss Carpenter probably makes uh, $75 or $100 a week. Well, what's that got to do with me? Miss Carpenter is either a very good actress or a very poor judge of precious stones. She just told me this was cheap costume jewelry. Strictly flash, she called it. Well, isn't it? Certainly not. This square-cut diamond is probably worth several thousand dollars. But if someone gave Lola expensive jewelry, they'd certainly want her to know its real value, wouldn't they? I'm sure they would. So, you see, I have been working. Mm. Now, shall we have breakfast? Hadn't you better return that? I'll join you in a second. This much is clear. Whoever stole the real pearls substituted the duplicates. Yes, that seems obvious. And in order to do so, that person must have been very close to Mrs. Peabody. That throws a spotlight on me. Well, the light also shines on the Baron and Baroness and on Mr. Harvey Beaumont. Do you mean you suspect them? All good detectives, including Metcalf, start by suspecting everyone. There, now I'm caught up with my correspondence. Uh oh, speak of the devil. How do you feel this morning, Mrs. Peabody? Frightful, Mr. Lawrence, just frightful. I didn't sleep a wink. I'm sorry to hear that. It was a great shock for all of us. Uh, but of course, sir. Uh, oh, uh, waiter, waiter. <coughs> hey, boss, I've been looking all over for you. I've been looking for you. 
Goldie, mail this to my aunt uh, Cleora, will you? Yeah, sure, boss. Sure. Uh, Rush airmail special delivery. Cleora? He ain't got no aunt Cleora. Goldie sealed orders. Oh. One, be sure no one follows you. Then go to Harvey Beaumont's room. Two, pick, lock, and enter. Facing Terrace. It is open. Four. Place wastebasket before window. Start smudge fire in it. Hope he knows what I'm doing. in the closet and observe everything that happens. Hide in the... P.S. Swallow this note. Oh, now, boss, this is going too far. This, I with you, I... I... Oh... I don't feel like eating a thing. Well, now, Gloria, and you're not going to starve yourself because of what happened last night. It wasn't your fault. On my 37th birthday, I'll never forget it. That's strange. Isn't that smoke coming out of that window? Must be a fire. Why, that's the fifth floor. Looks like my room. Nice work, Goldie. Thanks, boss. How did it taste? Oh, for your information, I am in what is commonly known as a dilemma. Would you please let me know what I'm supposed to be doing? In a moment, but first tell me exactly what Bowman did when he came in. Well, he flings open the door. He closes it. Bang! His eyes is wild. His face a symphony of mixed commotions. He's breathing hard. <sighs> the next thing... Goldie, will you please stop handing it up? Oh, gee, boss, you want it exactly as he was, don't you? We're in a hurry. Where did he go first? He shoots around the bed, and he stops right there. And then? I thought he was crazy. With a fire burning in the room, he suddenly gets interested in literature. <laughs> well, come on, get to the point. He picked up a book, one of them. Imagine a guy so dumb, he's got to look up instructions on how to put out a fire. Which book, Goldie? That one, uh, Pluto's Lives. Plutarch's Lives. Pluto, Plutarch, who cares? I don't know. Then he grabs the water and... The fire is out. I... Hey, boss. Here I am. And here are the pearls, Goldie. The poils? Yeah, the real poils. Well, what do you know? Pardon the interruption, boss. Yeah, what is it? We found the poils, right? Right. Well, 
That's what we call mission accomplished. You give them back to their real owner, and we goes on our merry way. Not quite. There's something you've overlooked. You've forgotten that Inspector Blake of the local gendarmerie has politely requested that we stay here until a certain murder's been cleared up. Yeah, that's right, I did. The murderer was after these. And it's quite probable that he'd arranged for a way to dispose of them. Now, where's the most logical place to dispose of something of this value? Well, it would be my opinion, based upon a reasonable amount of experience, in the far distant past, of course, that stuff of this kind would be handled by the biggest fence in town. And from your experience, in the far distant past, of course, wouldn't you say that a fence is often aware of a robbery even before it's committed? Sometimes. But, uh, what are you getting at? Just this. If we can find out who's the biggest fence in town and dangle these in front of him, he may make the next move. You know something, boss? I just thought of a way to get that very information for you. From your friend Lefty Lewis, no doubt. Yeah. How'd you guess? I would hardly expect to have a meeting with a fence in a place like this. Don't you worry. Lefty said to be here at 11. Hey, it's almost 11 now. I think you could uh, play bodyguard to these. Sure, boss, but you shouldn't have brought them along. Well, they're safer with us than anywhere else. Safer than in the vault at the hotel? What, and have the clerk broadcast our little secret to Beaumont to Inspector Blake? Oh, no, Cody. Pardon me, are you awfully busy? Speaking of tomatoes. Uh, only with our thoughts. Uh, would you care to join us? Oh, Waiter. No, thank you. But I did think there was a lot of wonderful music going to waste. By all means. Hey, but, but boss. Oh, Goldie, beauty has been known to stop a thousand clocks. Looks like Lefty made a mistake. Well, here we are dancing together and we haven't introduced ourselves. Well, is that necessary? I guess not. Then let's leave it that way. It's more exciting. Oh, so you like mystery and excitement. And what makes you think you're so mysterious, Mr. Lawrence? Thanks for the dance, Mr. Lawrence. Thanks for the 40 cent tour. Quite a smooth organization you have here. Coming from the Falcon, that's a compliment. Sit down. Thanks. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Lawrence? I'm afraid you're misinterpreting my little visit. I was just... Oh, uh... come on. Let's play like we're both grown up. Oh, perhaps you're under the impression I might know something about a certain pearl necklace. It doesn't take a detective to see that I'm in the restaurant business. Why would I be interested in anybody's necklace? I thought we were both going to act grown up. You stick to that line, we'll get exactly no place. Cigarette? Thanks. Thank you. Just for the sake of argument, let's say I am interested in a certain pearl necklace. I could tell you that that certain pearl necklace, which uh, sooner or later was expected to fall into your hands, isn't going to. Why? Because it fell into my hands first. If I were a fence, you'd expect that news to shock me. But it wouldn't, because I wouldn't believe it. Ah, one of the classics. I take it you're familiar with some of the others. Nightclub operators aren't totally illiterate. Have you ever read Plutarch's Lives? If you'll permit a pun, I'd say there are quite a few gems in it. Well, I must admit you've read the right book. Of course, a smart man like you would never carry so valuable a trinket in his pocket. Hardly. Well, now that you know my taste in literature, it'd be nice to hear from you sometime. Good night. Good night. We're in for a little trouble. Dame trouble. No, no. The necklace? Yeah. I told you we shouldn't have brought it. Come on, let's go. You go ahead and get a cab, huh? Give me that box there, please. Thanks. You've got ten dollars coming. Oh, uh, is this for sale? That's my supper. Your supper? I don't eat here. You think I'm crazy? Oh, well, I'm gonna keep this. You keep the change. Up town. Yes. Cap. 
were they going? I don't know. I just hit uptown. Tail that cab. Here, unwrap that for me, will you? I don't want to smoke and I ain't hungry. Let's concentrate on them. That's just what I am doing. Oh, gee, boss, I'm sorry. <laughs> and all the time I thought you was falling for that twist in the check room. Poor kid. Works in a big nightclub and has to bring her own peanut butter sandwiches. Cruel system, I calls it. Hey, boss, caviar. We ain't lost them yet. Come on, come on, give it some gas. Driver, stop the car, quick. Yes, sir. Can you take care of this for us? Why, certainly. Here's something for your trouble. Thanks. You can always depend on good old Uncle Sam. Something you boys wanted? Nothing at all. No, not a thing. Well, good night. Sorry, Nick. Can't use them. Can't use them? What do you mean? They're phonies. No good. No good? You're kidding. Now, look, Bender. I... Don't kid in this business, Nick. Well, they can't be. They gotta be real. I know where I got them. Look, Nick. They're cheap paste. Phonies. If you don't believe me, take them someplace else. But I tell you, I got them from... I know exactly where you got them for Mrs. Peabody. But Beaumont had the real ones all the time. Beaumont? Yes. I wouldn't even touch the real ones now. There's blood on them. That's all, Nick. Goldie, be a good boy and bring me my robe, will you? Oh, it's you, is it? Yeah. You know, you're a little bit late. Late? Yeah. For what? Two minutes sooner and you could have scrapped my back. Can I help you? I was looking for a match. Hope you don't mind. Not at all, but I don't think you'll find any in that drawer. Uh, as long as you're so interested, Williams, Let's see now. Uh, here I have uh, handkerchiefs. Very good linen, too. What's your game, Lawrence? Why did you say you were retained by Mrs. Peabody? Oh, oh, that. That was just conversation. I really am trying to find Mrs. Peabody's pearls for her. You're not making things any easier for the department, Lawrence. I think we'll arrange for a pair of seats for you and your stooge on the Florida plane. Well. That's very gracious of you, Inspector. Of course, we wouldn't do this for everyone. I'm certain of that. Williams here will bring your tickets by a little later. Package for Mr. Lawrence. Thanks. Uh, lend me half a dollar, will you? Dime help you? Take a tip from the police, my boy, a small one. Ain't you afraid this will put me in an upper bracket? It's uh, from my Aunt Cleora. Well, aren't you going to open it? Uh, uh, oh, of course, why not? Dear old Aunt Cleora, she's always sending me things. Jams, cookies. I wonder what on earth this can be. Oh, cigars. Will you have one? Never use them. I won't offer you one because you haven't got a match. Hey, boss, have I got news? Go ahead. I'm listening. <clears throat> For what? I just asked myself a question. I... 
I said, have I got news? No. Let's get out of here. Hey, what's with them? Oh, boy, the Poils came. Shh. I've changed my mind. I believe I will have a cigar after all. It's an expensive brand. Yes. Very expensive. Might cost you as much as 20 years to life. That's a long time. Very. Get some clothes on. Come on, boss. All you gotta do is tell them the truth. The truth about the truth, Gold, is that no one ever believes it. Why don't you let me be the judge of that? All right, Inspector. I trapped Harvey Beaumont into revealing that he'd hidden the real pills in his room. I was using them to smoke out the murderer. As you yourself said, Inspector, the jewels are of secondary importance. There's still a murderer at large. Your alibi is easy enough to check. If ever you get some clothes on. Where are we going? Mr. Beaumont's room, of course. Hey, it's Beaumont. Well, looks like your alibi won't stand up. An untimely death, I calls it. Take over, Williams. Come on, Lawrence. Ain't you overdoing a little? We ain't going nowhere. We're in here for the night. At a time like this, Goldie, the best policy is to maintain an attitude of complete uh, insouciance. Insouciance? Does that mean putting on your tie before hitting the hay? Hey, look who's here. Come on, you two. The inspector wants you. Miss Meredith, what reason did you have to want the false pearls copied? I didn't know they were false. I thought they were real and merely wanted to protect myself in case they were stolen. Ah, that's a stall, Inspector. She took the real ones and wanted to cover up. If your case against Miss Meredith is as cut and dried as all that, why don't you swear out a complaint against her? Inspector, I resent being cross-examined by a man who was under suspicion as an accessory himself. Relax, will you, Metcalf? Now, Mr. Burke is a jeweler and an expert. I can identify them at a glance. Uh, excuse me. Uh... Oh, sorry. Are these the pearls that Miss Meredith brought you? What did I do with my glasses? Yes, I, I'd recognize them anywhere. Even to this small, unmatched pearl at the side of the clasp. Do you mean to say that those are not the real pearls? Exactly. That is the necklace Miss Meredith brought to my office. You've been very helpful. Thank you very much. Glad to be of service. Good night, sir. Uh, you can clear up a couple of things for me, if you will. I'll go with you. What becomes of those? Uh, I think you should have those. Uh, they're just as phony as you are. <laughs> Lock them up. Inspector, you know what they say about acting in haste. I've got a proposition for you. You give me 24 hours freedom and I'll guarantee to give you the real pearls. I told you, Lawrence, I'm not interested in pearls. Well, that's part of the deal. The real pearls can be produced in five seconds, but for the murderer, we'll need 24 hours. Real pearls in five seconds? What are you talking about? Here you are. I fulfilled the first part of my bargain. These? Well, the jeweler said they were paste. Experts, even like yourself, Inspector, have been known to make mistakes under pressure. Besides, the gentleman was handicapped without his glasses. Say, wait a minute. I read someplace that real pearls have a sandy feeling when you rub them across your teeth. And phone is as smooth as satin. These are genuine. Say, I ought to read more, okay? You three can have your 24 hours on one condition. What's that? I want to be there to see Metcalf's face when he finds out these are the McCoy. You won't be sorry, Inspector. Man in my position has to put his trust in someone. Thanks. But how do you know he won't cross you? Because you're going to follow him. Barbary Towers. Yes, sir.
I don't know what to say. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't be involved in a theft and a murder and, and a... perhaps it was worth it. You better start thinking, boss. We only got 24 hours. Well, what's there to think about? You two wait at the hotel while I pick up the real pearls at the hatchery. The hatchery? Sure, the chicken hatchery. But, boss, I thought... You don't for a moment suppose I'd take a chance on leaving them where Metcalf could lay his hands on them? Met? Certainly not. That was very wise. On second thought, Goldie, I'm going to let you go and pick them up. Sure, boss. What are they? Uh, go to the Sobol Chicken Hatchery, Second and River. I'll find it. Don't worry. Uh, the watchman there is a friend of mine, and he's left the door of the third pen open. It's full of setting hens. Uh, the floor is covered with straw, and under the straw, in the northeast corner, you can't miss them. Gee, boss, that was clever. Nobody would ever think of looking in a hen house for jewelry. You better go right over now. We'll be waiting for you. Hey, I may as well keep this cab. You'll have to get another cab. I'm through for the day. <laughs> Boy, is he in a hurry. He didn't even wait to get paid. <laughs> Four hours of fresh air, and you got to practice your rumba. <laughs> Not at all. I'm hungry. Besides, I think we've earned a nice supper. Oh, I ain't hungry. Oh, come on, Goldie. Maybe a good dinner is just what we all need. We ought to be trying at least to follow up a suspect or a clue or something. Well, this is about as good a place as you can find to do that very thing. You mean you're working on something? We didn't just come here to look at the dames. I mean to eat. Goldie, on a clear day, you can see two beautiful suspects right from here. So, come on, come on, come on. Order for me, I'll be right back. Oh, this'll probably be the last meal I get in a long time. Hey, waiter, bring me the first half. that number over, darling. If I did, it was because of your help. You've taught me so much, Alex. Then why can't we do something about it? This situation's driving me crazy. Please, Alex. Look, honey, when are you going to tell Nick? I want to, Alex. You know I do, but I just don't know how. We can't go on like this. We love each other. You've got to hurt him sooner or later. He's been so good to me, Alex. You've got to think of yourself. We can go places together. I can do so much for you. Believe me, I want to, Alex. I don't know. It's... Hello? Oh, hello, Nick. Right away? Can it wait? Oh, I see. Well, I'll be right up. He says it's important. Maybe this is as good a time as any. If I get a chance, I'll try. Promise?
on, Nick. Look, well, I'm due on the air in a few minutes, so I've got to talk fast. What's the matter? Plenty. My contract with the sponsor's up in a few days. And I told him I'm not going to renew it. Are you crazy? We're leaving, going out of town, both of us. Both of us, but... If we don't get away, there's no telling what'll happen. But I can't leave now, Nick. I can't leave now. I'm just getting somewhere. Alex promised to feature me in a show in New York. I've worked so hard. I've got a career to think about. I've more than a career to think about. What have you done? What I've done, I did for you, Lola. <laughs> Nick, you can't treat me this way. You're in this, too. In what, Nick? Why, every ring, every piece of jewelry, everything you've got, I paid for. Not with that measly salary I earn upstairs. You know that. You know I choose. I don't know what you're talking about. Lola. Everything has been missing around this hotel during the past year. Well, two things. You stole them? That's right, Lola. I stole them so I could buy things to make you look pretty. You are pretty, Lola. Awfully pretty. I'm sorry we have to leave, but somebody's caught on and they're closing in on me. I don't want any part of this, Nick. You did it all yourself. No one asked you to. You can't involve me. You're not going to ruin my life just... You're awfully pretty, Lola. But that's not going to help you when you're facing a jury. You wouldn't dare. I dare anything where you're concerned, Lola. Gee, Nicky, I, I didn't realize you were in such a jam. I... You know now. What are you going to do about it? Well, of course, I'll, I'll go if you want me to, Nicky. That's more like it. I, I haven't been a very good wife, have I, Nicky? I've been so, so neglectful. I've been so selfish. But honest, Way down deep, I, I do love you. Lola, without you, nothing makes any sense. Darling, we, we've got to play this smart. We can't just disappear. It would look too suspicious. I'll tell Alex that, that I have to go home, that, that Mother sent for me. I knew I could depend on you. You'd better leave you. You're on the air in a minute. I'll make it all right. I'll be sure and give Alex your notice and we'll leave in a few days. Uh, now, darling, you have to hurry. Hello. Get me the Barbary bowl.
And again, as the gong strikes midnight, Nick the Night Owl comes to you over Clear Channel Station, KGR, for another night-long session of transcribed music as requested by all you sun dodgers in the high Sierras to the Mexican border, in the Mojave Desert to the waters of the Pacific, and sponsored by the hysterical Scotchman who'd rather give you an automobile and sell you one, that is, if you have the price. And at the request of Art, Shirley, Bruce, and Nancy down at the White Bowl, and the three happy boys at Clark's Mortuary, we spin you Skinny Ennis's recording of I Couldn't Sleep a Wink Last Night. Believe me, folks, we sure have been busy around here, and I might as well tell you, folks, that I almost missed being on the air tonight by a slip. Oh, a slip of a girl, of course, you foolish people. And here's a demand note from the night watchman at the radio clock and watch company for a recording of 7 o'clock in the morning. What's the matter, Lola? Tell me, what's wrong? Everything's wrong. Nick was desperate. I... I've never seen him like that. Something serious is going to happen. And you're not going to be here when it does. Oh, Alex, what are we going to do? Where is he now? And now, folks, light up a cigarette and listen to this little collector's item. This is for Terry Turner and his old granddad out at Inglewood. You're starting to pack right now, and you're leaving here right away. But, darling, you can't let me go alone. What about us? Look, there's no time to waste. You go to another hotel and call me. I'll figure out something later. Can't you go with me? We haven't got time to argue, Lola. I can't leave with you tonight. It would only excite suspicion. But I can cover up for you. Now hurry it. You've got to get out of here before Nick gets any ideas. Oh, Alex, I'm scared. Now pull yourself together, dear. But suppose he finds out and follows me. You don't know him. He's mad. He'll be on the air until 5 o'clock. You'll be well on your way by then. And it's a thousand and one chance the police will pick him up before he even knows where to look for you. I better go with it, be wondering what's become of me. Hurry it, honey. I'll send a boy up for your things in 20 minutes. All right, Alex. You weren't planning to pack tonight, were you, Lola? What's the matter, Lola? Did I frighten you? And now, boys and girls, it's a real privilege to present a recording by that favorite of favorites, Frances Langford, singing Dreaming Out Loud from her new picture, The Bamboo Blonde. Yeah, that's what everyone thinks. Clever, isn't it? Yes, Nick, it's, it's very clever. So are you, Lola. Very clever. You were getting ready so we could go away together, weren't you? I wanted to get started as soon as possible. No, Nick. No. What's the matter, darling? Don't be afraid. Nick, please! Please! Kiss me, Lola. It's unpatriotic to waste good food these days. Uh-oh. Hey, that ain't good. Maybe we ought to tip off the boss. Where do you suppose he went? I got a notion he's having a few ways with a certain little suspect that ought to be up there singing. But who ain't been around for 15 or 20 minutes. 
course, she could have gone to her room. But then again, she might be up on the roof of that radio station with that night owl. We certainly ought to warn Mr. Lawrence. He doesn't know that man from headquarters is trailing us. Right. You take KG on, I'll go to Lola's. Maybe I'd better try her dressing room first. Yeah, come on, come on. How do you like this? I got a letter from a couple of the boys in the county jail with a special request. Well, don't go away, boys. Here it is. Charlie Barnett and his red-hot saxophone and his gang will render you slay me. Don't touch that gun, Lawrence. Keep your hands up. Don't be silly, Williams. You're wasting time. The murderer must have gone out that door. Stop, Lawrence. Save that talk for the inspector. Gee, boss, I've been looking everywhere for you. Hey, what goes on here? Who? Oh! Well, I didn't do it. I, I... Just the man I want to see. Where's Joe? I sent her up to KGR. Williams, you've got to take us up to the radio station. Nothing doing. But the girl's in trouble, I tell you. Talk isn't going to help you now, Lawrence. Come on, get into these. You've got to listen. I'm sorry. So am I, oh. Williams. number from the gay 20s that all right and now what have we here the old phone's been ringing all night you know we may be a little slow but we finally get around to every request up here at kgr yes sir okay twilight time with les brown and his orchestra I wish you hadn't come up here, Joan. I, uh, I was looking for Mr. Lawrence. I thought he was up here. You're such a nice girl, Joan. I wish you hadn't done it. I haven't done anything, Nick. I'm awfully sorry, Joan. About what? I don't like to have to do this. I haven't anything against you, Joan. No, Nick, no. But if you hadn't come up here, you wouldn't have known my little secret. I guess you might as well know everything now. I just killed Lola. She was my wife. She was pretty. Awful pretty. I killed her, I tell you. You won't tell. No. You won't tell anybody. Baby, no! No, no! Why are you taking me? Don't ask me any questions. You better do as I say, Joan. Stay where you are. doubt that the fingerprints on this will check with those on the knife that killed the waiter. Mm-hmm. Oh, Goldie, just a minute. I think you'll find that this little souvenir, which was fired at us through the window, will fit Nick's gun perfectly and match the bullets that killed Beaumont and Lola Carpenter. Well, Lawrence, I guess I had you a little wrong at first, mm -hmm. but I want to thank you. You let me go! You let me go! You keep your hands off me! You leave me alone! Leave me alone! Keep your hands off me! You! You! This is outrageous! Now, you look here, Inspector! I know all about 
Get out of it, Mrs. Peabody. Take it easy. We'll talk to you later. Just a minute. Just a minute, Inspector. Hold that man. Chicken hatcheries, huh? I'll fix you for this. I want to swear out a warrant for his arrest and the girl, too. If you're still looking for the pearls, Metcalf, I have them at headquarters. But he's the man that's... yourself. You had a head on those big shoulders. You'd have sworn out a warrant long ago. For this fat butterfly and her little click of crooks. Click of crooks? This isn't the first time this charming little lady, with the help of Beaumont, has swindled your insurance company. In fact, they made it a habit. Mrs. Peabody. Yeah, you stupid fat brain. We made a sucker out of you for years. <laughs> well, I don't understand. I, I thought we were friends. Somebody ought to tell you that fine feathers don't always make fine friends. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's molting. 